Okay. Who are you and where are we? My name is Paul Harrison. I am the inventor and founder of Thermark Corporation and the laser bonding technology. And over the past 15, 16 years, basically the product hasn't changed much. And now there is some new chemistry, better equipment. So we have a new bonding material which has smaller particle sizes, which allows for greater laser absorption, which creates the heat that makes the traditional chemistry happen, where we can take these ceramic inks and porcelainize a metal surface. Does or glass or ceramic also. And uh, does the product require a thick or thin metal? What's the principle behind it? The thickness of the metal really doesn't matter as long as the laser is focused relatively on the surface. The thicker the material, however, the more it will act as a heat sink to draw the heat very quickly away from the process. So don't take it right out of your cold warehouse at below room temperature. It, it, and then it, yeah, that's right. Not out of a, a real cold temperature. But the big difference that you will notice is stainless steel is not nearly the conductor or heat sink that aluminum is or brass or copper. So that you will see that you could do stainless steel or steel with a much faster speed with the same power than you could with aluminum or brass or copper need more power or slower speed in order to let the bonding process occur. Okay. And typically, when it's working properly, you'll see a really bright white light. If it is more orangey red, there's not enough power to slow the laser down. If you're working at 100% power, slow the speed down until you get that bright white light and then you know the chemistry is happening. So either you're dead or your laser is working if you get the big bright white light, right? <laughs> That's right. That's it. Um, now, does the second pass benefit you? Is it only one pass? How thick do you spray? What are the rules there? The spraying or brushing, I'm sorry, I got to, you know, we'll have to cut this. I'm sorry. I'm going uh, to. I got it. Um, so, does um, passing a second time, be, is it beneficial? And what about thickness of the spray? Usually, it's not beneficial except if you were using a, a high power, a second pass will begin to actually take it back off. If the material is absorbing so much, the answer would be yes. Go back, you know, but use slightly less power, but go over it twice. There are times going over it a second time will complete the bonding process. But normally, if uh, on the surface, a second power would just begin to remove it, and a third power will begin to really take the mark off. Okay. So once. And every laser is different, even every 50 watt laser is 53 watts or 49 watts or whatever. And each one acts a little bit differently. We always give you the parameters to start with, you'll get a mark, but then you want to tune it in and play around a little bit. For your laser on that product that, that, that Exactly. Okay. But once you've got it, as long as you use a consistent material, you know, substrate material, once you've figured out the parameters, it should work every time. You know. And there's a massive change on your laser, and then we're talking about lasers that aren't even my laser, and your tube's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. If the same parameters, you're not getting that bright white light anymore, then the tube is getting old. Something's happened to the controls of the laser, and it's not delivering the is power. Is there a life of the spray in terms of in the can? No. The, can, the, 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 the material, if it's in the can, will last until the can's empty, even if it takes years. Okay. which is not likely. But if you buy it in the jar and dilute it with yourself with alcohol and water, uh, basically no. If you forget and don't put the cup back on and it dries out, just put some water and alcohol in it. Turn it upside down if it's cake card in the bottom, so grab it and shake it up. No, there's no real lifetime. It's all inorganic material. And important to shake it before you use it? Yes, because then you'll get even distribution of the pigment and the other materials that help absorb the laser, there's silica in there as well as the, the uh, either ceramic or metallized pigments. Uh, just to be clear, I ask about metal. Did you mention something about glass or other uses besides metal? There are two versions of the material, one for metals, works on basically all metals, brass, copper, aluminum, steel, stainless steel, and then another formulation that will work on ceramic tile, 
glass, and stone. What's the outcome of that when you do that? Black as well? It, as well. You get, you get the same basic outcome. It's just a different chemistry because the substrate is different. So we use different pigments. Okay. okay. For important. all intents and purposes, it is the same process. The materials will look similar. One's a little darker than the other, but the end result is still a black mark on the substrate. And you're Chinese and you invented this in China, right? Right. <laughs> so something else that's good that's made here finally, I appreciate that. Okay, and so nice talking with you. No pleasure. We're gonna get it to all our customers and we want them to know where to get it. So we'll they'll get the link from us and all the information. That's okay. right, that's it. You get it from uh, Laser Sketch in Chicago. Perfect. Thanks. On software, I mean, we don't we don't use a DPI system. We use vectors. So we have a circle. We put lines in it, right. and we we're choosing between spacing. And what are the rules? What's the theory behind that? Okay, the basic spot size for your laser is approximately eight times of an inch, two tenths of a millimeter. Uh, so you would want to have a line spacing no bigger than the size of your spot. There's no need to overlap them too much, you just want to make sure that they are up against each other so it completely fills it. And when you're running in vector, you should be able to run on steel or stainless steel, probably at a speed of at least two inches a second and maybe much faster depending on the optics and so on and the substrate. But steel and stainless steel, and as we mentioned earlier, aluminum, brass, and copper absorb more of the heat, so you do need to slow it down when you're doing those materials. Okay. Perfect. We'll convert those inches over to millimeters and we'll translate it into spacing vectors and stuff like that. Perfect. Thanks. Okay.